Welcome back to the channel folks and to another tutorial. It's going to be another one of those tutorials that you can use on a number of different kinds of vehicles. In this case all German vehicles but it's not so much a focus on completing one vehicle start to finish and what we're looking at in this video is Zimmerit. Zimmerit is a feature of tanks that is quite often the cause of a very very dark finish because you need to wash the surface to pick out all that tiny little bits of detail. So I'm going to show you here how I achieve the effects you can see in the pictures we're scrolling through just now. The subject matter is going to be Sturm Tigers because I'm currently working on them. I've actually repainted my old Sturm Tigers. I wanted a brighter finish that was more in tune with the finish I've given the uh, Yad Tigers and King Tigers that we've done. So these guys are going to be our subject for today but it's all about the minute guys, how to get a nice bright finish that's going to show off that surface without bringing the whole vehicle down. So to begin, I've airbrushed the Sturm Tiger and given it a coat of gloss varnish that will help the wash work easily across the surface. Whilst there are many different kinds of washes that you can use to wash the Zimmerit or any other part of the vehicle, I'm going to be using this MIG acrylic wash. This is a dark brown wash and it's specifically designed to be a pin wash, which means it's got good capillary action. You know, you can dilute it and it will nicely flow into recesses, which is what we need for the Zimmerit here. Now you can see I've put some of this into the palette and a little bit of water and apologies for the state of that palette folk I really need to clean it. Now you can see how thin this is. This is the mixture I'm going to be applying. It is so thin. Now you can achieve this uh, level of thinness um, with enamels. You can get it with other acrylic paints but it might be a bit more tricky and you may find this MIG ammo wash is perfect for you. If we are working with the, the right level of dilution, we can confidently cover the entire surface. I'm starting here on the areas of damage similar. Now you notice I painted it quite a distinctive red for the primer colour. If, if you just go for a dark, dark red, it tends to just look like the red brown by the time you're finished. So I, I go quite bright. So after painting those areas in particular so I can paint them a little bit heavier just to dull them down enough I can then start painting the Zimmerit surface and it really is just a case of applying it evenly all over. The other areas of the tank that don't have Zimmerit will get pin washes applied. I'm not going to show it in this video a pin wash but if you've been following the channel you'll have seen many many pin wash videos folks and just check the playlist on how to paint flames of war figures if you've not. Here's a little comparison between one which has been washed, that's the one with the damage in it, and one that hasn't. Now you can't see a huge difference between them folks. If that's the case then you've done it right and it's not going to get too dark. Keep working over all the zimmerated surfaces and there may be more or less on the particular vehicle that you are working on compared to this. And just keep it consistent folks. If you need to mix up a new batch of uh, thinned wash, just you know, keep it consistent so that you're going to get a nice even result and don't be tempted to go heavy. That's the key. As this is an acrylic wash it actually dries really quickly which is a big advantage over the enamel type washes and I'm just taking a moment to darken down the bare hull, the hull red colour that I've used which is just basically a red by the way folks, nothing fancy there. But I just want to darken it down a bit to make a nice clear distinction between the Zimmerit 
and the hull, you know, where they join. And just to dull it down a little bit, you can also add a little bit of dust wash in there as well, folks, if you wish, just to wash it out a little so it doesn't look quite so rich, but it still stands out nice against the brown of the camel. We're talking about Zimmerit here, but we're also painting a Yad Tiger. So there's one other feature I think it's worthwhile me spending a little bit of time on, and that is the big flame cut edges of the armour plates. It's such a heavily armoured vehicle that these plates are really obvious. So it's a nice feature to work on. So I'm going to be washing them using the same kind of wash, the acrylic wash. It's not going to be as heavily thinned as on the Zimmerit though, you can see that straight away and I'm washing it across the flat surfaces of the flame cut edges and into the recesses around them. And with this slightly thicker wash, we're now going to add a little bit more definition on all the detail that's sitting on top of the Zimmerit. So you've got some great big massive bolts, for instance, and uh, mounting points for the, uh, the Pioneer tools and all these kind of things. So we're going to go through with that slightly thicker wash and start picking all these details out. And also the, the edge, the bottom edge of that big Sl uh, slab on the side there folks. I'm going to put a nice dark solid wash along that bottom edge to help define the, the, the joining point basically. Be careful when you're painting all these little areas on top of the Zimmerit folks. We're using a thin wash here. The capillary action is quite effective. It may start drawing itself off into the Zimmerit and we don't want that. So just take a moment to clean off any excess that spreads out. The, the wash that you've already applied to the Zimmerit will be nice and dry and won't be removed. Let's take a moment to go back to the flame cut edges again. They go right up the top as well as along the side, folks. So a nice controlled wash, as you can see, much thicker than we're doing on the Zimmerit. And then those recesses that we have shaded will show up nicely once we move on to the highlight. Right folks, it's now time to do some highlighting. So what I'm doing here isn't strictly speaking dry brushing, but it's pretty close. I don't want to be sweeping the brush over the surface because we may hit other areas that we don't want to hit and it can result in a little bit maybe too dusty a look. And we really just want to highlight by placing the flat of the brush, which is almost dry, onto the surface in a way where it will leave paint rather than scrape paint off, if that makes sense. Even though it's a big chunky vehicle, there are some quite small areas of Simmerit on the Sturm Tiger, so just make sure you're approaching the area you want to work on from the correct angle, the best angle to get your brush in flat and then sort of like as we've done before just patting it down on the surface. That way you'll avoid hitting the surrounding areas that you don't want to have A this paint on or B potentially a dry brushed appearance. I'm using Vallejo Iraqi Sand for this. It's my go-to highlight colour for my German dark yellow. And when you, when you see me putting on here, folks, it may look quite bright, 
but that's just all paint when it's freshly painted looks brighter than it will when it has dried. So this is going to give a good contrast, it's not going to lift the, the main colour up too much from the background and so give a good uh, transition from the shade to the main colour to the highlight. So that's the yellow folks, that's the highlight for the yellow. What about the Tamiya Red Brown that we've used and the Tamiya NATO Green? Well I'm not going to highlight them at all. It sounds a bit daft, you'd think you'd want to highlight them, but doing the dark yellow by itself is enough to lift the Zimmerit for the whole surface, whereas highlighting all the other colours and adding in, you know, quite bright greens and browns so that they're, they're noticeable, it can make the whole surface look a bit busy and unnatural, whereas just you doing the yellow alone does the trick. And we can use the Iraqi sand to highlight those um, flame cut edges, the little ridges on there folks. Just draw the flat of the brush along them and then we'll be ready at a later point to do some edge highlighting on the flat panels, you know, where they, they sort of dovetail into each other. As far as the zimmer it goes folks, that's going to be it, but hopefully seeing how we can make a nice feature out of these big plates of armour is a good bonus for you too. So the last touch for the Zimmerit, in this case only where there's damaged Zimmerit, is to get a little bit of a chipped edge, nice bright chipped edge around the, the hull. Not on the hull itself, just on the Zimmerit. And we don't want to go over the top and we don't want to apply this approach to any other areas on the Zimmerit, only to the damaged bit. So I'm going to take some deck tan, that's Phalasial deck tan, and I'm going to paint just little broken dots or lines around the Zimmerit. Now Zimmerit, you know, it's a paste, it's a, a sort of dry, whitish kind of paste. So when it's broken, it has that appearance. You know, imagine uh, a painted wall and uh, it's covered in plaster and there's a break, there's going to be some nice bright areas of plaster showing. And that's what we're after here. You can see it really makes a feature of the, the broken Zimmerit without going over the top. And that folks is us, that's the end of the tutorial. Obviously there's a lot more involved in painting the entire tank, but check out the uh, playlist for how to paint all the various German vehicles. You see there's a lot of things in there about weathering as well as examples of the airbrushing. And there's a link at the end to a video where I'm using the pin wash for that purpose, for panels, recesses and little points of detail. So. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, stick them down in the comments below and I will get back to you. There's going to be some still pictures coming up at the end, folks, so you can have a look at the finished result in a bit more detail. Thanks again for watching, folks. Thanks to all the subscribers out there who follow the channel. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so to help us build the channel and bring this kind of content to more people who enjoy this hobby. And if you hit the bell button, folks, we'll definitely see you all on the next one.